Hello internet, what's going on and welcome back to your favourite forecourt of fictitious fanfare, Top 10 Nerd, the place where we pinpoint plot lines and ponder pensively. Tongue twisters. As always, I'll be your host Jack Finch and I sincerely hope that you're all doing grand, so today take a seat as we take a look at the Top 10 Titans shocking facts. Can you help me? Now, as you all know by now, Titans is DC's newest foray into the world of direct-to-consumer digital streaming broadcasting and will be the flagship title for DC Universe. Its full release is set for September 15th of this year with the 12-part Titans following shortly after on October 12th. It's safe to say that the whole thing is pretty hype. Despite a controversially melodramatic trailer, most of the released information on the series is looking like we're set for some screen justice for Dick Grayson, Starfire, Raven and Beast Boy. Well, I mean we can only hope. So without further delay, let's take a look at what we know. Kicking off at number 10, Acolyte will be the main villain. We're kind of split down the middle on this one, although Deathstroke or Brother Blood would have been the clear choice in most people's pick of the villain. At least they haven't jumped straight in with a Trigon storyline, right? In this case, it seems like the show's creators are possibly irking on the air of caution and playing things safe with the purple suited demonic con man, aka Acolyte. First debuted in Young Justice number 9 in 1999, Acolyte was initially a pretty horrifically powerful villain that took to brainwashing hordes of young children in the United States with the intention of forcing them to assassinate their own parents. Young Justice soon called his bluff though and they scooby dooed him out of town. According to sources released by the Titans casting call, Acolyte's story arc involves murdering Raven's mother and then further attempts to drain Raven's power. She can't catch a break. Next up at number 9, Arsenal will make a cameo. Maybe. Damn straight, good old Roy Harper is strongly rumoured to be firing into the Titans reprisal and we really hope it's true. According to a casting sheet reveal, the possibility of Roy Harper, aka Arsenal, appearing on the show is strongly in the running. Codenamed Daniel Cross, the character breakdown calls for a male 17 to 19, Caucasian, athletic, street smart, cocky yet charming. His life is changed forever when he crosses a crime fighter and is given a new outlet for his rebellious ways. Hmm. Definitely sounds like someone we know. Yet we understand this could be quite a number of possible characters, but Arsenal just fits. And in terms of street smart business moves, DC would be pretty foolish to miss out on even a slight crossover with the Arrowverse. What do you guys think? Next up at number eight, the Flying Graysons. Yeah. We even see it in big bright lights in the trailer, the synonymous Flying Graysons, everyone's favourite all-American acrobatic family that died tragically at the hands of the scheming Tony Zuko and awkward lack of safety netting. Titans is set to be incredibly Dick Grayson centric and rumours are sketchy as to whether John and Mary's murder will follow the same canon as the comic books, but their story arc will definitely be appearing on the show. Additionally, an audition tape was recovered of Canadian actor Tim Campbell reading for the presumed role of John Grayson. Grayson. In this script, the acrobatic family are pitched as singers instead of circus performers, so let's hope that's not the case. Coming in at number 7, Hawk and Dove. Hank Hall and Dawn Granger, Chaos and Order, Hawk and Dove. In the comics, this crime fighting couple in arms have very different views on the art of pummeling the bad guys and make for a dynamic narrative injection. In the show, they'll be played by Alan Richardson and Minka Kelly and are pitched to be recurring supporting characters for the series. Reportedly, they also have a clause in their contract to make them regulars by season two if the show gets that far. And there's even rumors of a spin off series indicating a lot of effort in making the duo a fan favorite. Reportedly, in the show, Hawk and Dove will be tweeted slightly to avoid complications with their comic book origins. They'll both be wearing super suits instead of having avatar powers and both be heavily trained in martial arts. They're even trying to step up Dove's peace loving persona, taking her in a much more violent direction. <laughs> Who knows, maybe Hawk will be the voice of reason this time. Next up at number 6, the Doom Patrol. Yep, just like Hawk and Dove, the Titans won't be the only superheroes in town. According to episode 5 of the series, conveniently titled The Doom Patrol, it's pretty safe to say that the original lineup of Robot Man, Negative Man, Elastigirl and The Chief will be making a well deserved appearance on the show. According to the show's production listing, April Bowby will be playing Elastigirl, yeah, not girl. Jake Michaels will be playing 
Robot Man and Dwayne Murphy will play Negative Man. The trio will be guest starring throughout the series, with Bruno Bashir picking up the mainstay role of Niles Calder, aka the chief and leader of the Doom Patrol. DC have also announced that Doom Patrol will be getting their own titular series on their new streaming service, so it makes sense that they'll be slowly introduced through the Titans show. Sounds good to me. Coming in at number 5, Akiva Goldsman's Bad Track Record. Yeah, let's get it out of the way. The guy behind the series, Akiva Goldsman, is also the man who wrote Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. And while you might enjoy some peak 90s cheese fest extravaganza, What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! <laughs> they're generally considered to be the worst superhero films ever made. Also, most recently, he was behind The Dark Tower, Stephen King's spellbindingly epic series that spans nine incredible novels that Goldsman somehow managed to sum up in a single hour and 35 minute film. Yeah, it wasn't great, and I'm not bitter at all. His track record isn't the most hopeful for DC fans to say the least, but if there's any saving grace, it's that Goldsman has been working on getting a Titans production to fruition for a hell of a long time, and he seems incredibly invested at this point. Which leads us on to our number four point, at least he's got allies because things actually look incredibly bright for the Titan series, and DC are heavily invested in making their flagship DC Universe title a hit success with fans. Akiva Goldsman has surrounded himself with quite a number of people who know quite the thing or two about this whole comic book thing. It's safe to say that the Titans are in good hands with the likes of Greg Belanti and Sarah Schechter, the executive producers behind Arrow and The Flash. Also on board is Chief Creative Officer of the whole of DC, Jeff Johns, an incredibly popular comic book writer back in the day, responsible for the likes of Infinite Crisis, Blackest Night, Flashpoint and Doomsday Clock. Oh, also, also, he wrote nearly 50 issues of Teen Titans and they were pretty damn good. Swinging on in at number 3, it'll be dark. And it won't be anywhere near the Teen Titans staple of Cartoon Network, tonally speaking, of course. And there's a reason the show's frontrunners want to steer the franchise away in a gritty, dark new direction. Because streaming services like Netflix and DC Universe are a whole new frontier for super heroic narratives. It's clear from the Titans trailer that the show's pilot director, Brad Anderson, is aiming for the doom and gloom that airs around Dick Grayson, with Robin's meteoric rise through vigilantism being a show staple. Brad Anderson is also behind some pretty atmospherically dark works of cinema too, being at the helm of 2018's Beirut starring John Hamm and the much more visceral The Machinist with Christian Bale. If you've seen either two of those films, you'll see exactly what we're getting at. Coming in at number two, Robin is a cop. Yeah, no biggie if you've seen the show's trailer, but it's the story arc surrounding that we're most excited about. The stage is seemingly set for Dick Grayson to don his badge and gun at Bloodhaven Police Department and rid the small city of crime and corruption from the inside out. Well, we hope at least. We already know that at least a portion of this narrative will be accurate, with Lindsay Gore taking up the role of Amy Rohrbach, Dick Grayson's detective partner in the show. In the Bloodhaven story arc, Dick Grayson finds 22 dead men that have floated into Gotham South Harbour, leading him out to rid a whole new city of corruption on his own. With the Titans being a brand new TV franchise for DC, it makes sense that they're trying to carve their own path compared to the likes of Legends of Tomorrow, The Flash and Arrow. Oh, also Barbara Gordon is rumoured to be on the show, which would be awesome. And finally at our number one spot, all things Jason Todd. Yup, the Titans seemingly can't avoid Jason Todd and we've got no problem with that at all. According to episode 7 of the Titans show listing, Jason Todd will have his own title episode forming towards the end of the show's debut season. I mean, it's completely unclear what role Jason Todd, if any, will actually play in the show and whether he'll be available as a villain or just a pesky little side character. What we do know is that Dick Grayson definitely isn't a teenager in Titans and the possibility of Todd taking over the mantle of Robin is incredibly likely at this point, being in line with Dick's progression into Nightwing. Well, who knows, why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. How do you guys feel that the Titan show is going to go? Excited for it or completely apprehensive? If you've been a fan of this video or just Top 10 Nerd in particular, then why don't you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe bell to stay up to date with our latest and greatest uploads. As per usual, I've been your host Jack Finch, you've been watching Top 10 Nerd, and until next time, you take it easy.